guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna share how you can grow a nice, long, full, and luscious beard. I'm just kidding, we're gonna talk all about the string of hearts and I often get asked the question, how are you able to grow such a nice, full, sexy looking string of hearts while mine is scrawny and straggly? So hopefully in this video, I'm able to address a lot of the common questions and concerns you have when it comes to your string of hearts. Maybe you're experiencing a bit of balding at the top. Maybe the leaves are dropping along the vines or you're experiencing thin, wrinkly leaves. Maybe they're growing a little bit smaller or slow growth or maybe no growth at all. And then I'm also gonna share with you guys a few tips and tricks on how you can make your string of hearts look a little bit more full and more dense, similar to mine. With that said, the way I care for my string of hearts is obviously based on the environment it's in, the lighting I get, the way it faces, the size of my window, the size of the string of hearts, the potting medium it's in, the way I go about watering it, and that will be different to what you need to do in your environment. So definitely take the information I'm giving you guys and adjust it accordingly. And to kind of help illustrate that, I'm first gonna share with you how I care for my string of hearts in this environment. And then we're gonna take a look at an example from one of you guys who submitted your pictures on how you go about carrying your string of hearts right now and what adjustments I would make if that was my string of hearts in that environment. So there's gonna be a lot of information in this video. So definitely sit back, relax, grab a coffee or some wine, or maybe do some plant work while you have this video playing in the background. And before we get started, if you do like these types of content, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And for those of you guys who's new to my channel and watch my videos but aren't subscribed, I know who you are. I can see it in my data. I'm just kidding, but definitely hit that subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get started. So first up, let's talk a little bit of history with my string of hearts. I first bought this plant back in the summer of 2018. So he's nearly three years old. And I first got it in this original six inch container that you guys see with the original potting mixture. So you guys can see in this footage that the first thing I wanted to do was untangle him because I knew I wanted it hanging from the ceiling and I wanted to really drape nicely and be tangled free. So I spent about 45 minutes untangling him on top of my table here. He was obviously a little shorter than what he is today. So it was a little bit easier to untangle. The reality is there is no easy way to untangle a string of hearts. I mean, if I was to give any suggestions or tips, I would say start when it's shorter to have it already tangled free. And as it continues to grow, obviously, you know, manage it along the way, don't neglect it. But if you have a bit of length, an advice I would give is like start at the top and just follow that vine and use like a couple or three of them. And then move on to the next three vines and so on and so forth until you kind of get it tangled free. It does require a lot of time. It does require a lot of patience. Like I said, there is no easy way out, but there is a benefit of having it tangled free. Not only does it give you that nice waterfall occurring look, but because I only have light on one side of my house, I often want to make sure that all the vines are equally getting as much light as possible because if they are a bit tangled free or overlapping, I find that some of the vines that are, you know, behind other vines and they're not getting the same amount of light, their hearts will tend to grow a little bit smaller. And when we talk about lighting and how I go about caring for it, that is going to be a big factor in how your string of hearts grows. But yeah, that's pretty much the history on my string of hearts. I got it back in 2018, three years old. Haven't repotted this guy since then. It's still in the original container. And you guys can see how long he was and how he wasn't as dense or as full when I first got him, but obviously now he looks quite different. So now let's get into the details of how I go about caring for my string of hearts. First touch on lighting. As I mentioned, I only have light on one side of my house. It is a south facing window, floor to ceiling. It is pretty much unobstructed view. You know, there is a bit of that wall on my terrace because I am on the first floor, but it has a nice full view of the sky and it is about like eight to 10 feet away from the window. Still in the same location since I first brought it home and it loves a lot of bright, bright, bright light. Uh, you know, even a few hours of direct sunlight. Some people who live in warmer climates can actually grow this outside, partial shade, and they honestly love that type of environment. So. I can't stress enough that this plant needs a lot of that bright, bright, bright indirect light. South facing preferred, east or west, good. North, I probably wouldn't necessarily recommend it, although it can tolerate a north facing light or a medium and low light. The growth rate and the size of it, the way it's gonna look will obviously be a little bit different than if it was grown in a south facing window, east or west. If you only have a north facing window and you really want this plant, you know, just move it as close as possible to that window. Maybe add a bit of grow light to just help supplement a bit of that lighting. But you know, I've seen other people who have, you know, northeast or northwest facing windows and their string of hearts are pretty good as well too. So comment below, let me know which lighting direction you have if you have a string of hearts and how well it's growing in that lighting uh, direction because I do 
find that lighting is going to be a big factor. Now I'm going to touch a bit on the potting medium this is in before we get into how I go about watering my string of hearts. This is in the original potting medium and we're going to assume because this is semi succulent that that potting medium you know is high in nutrients but also well draining and I do know that because of the way when the water drains through I can tell that it is a nice well draining a potting medium without necessarily going in there and you know sticking my fingers in to feel the soil but I have also topped it up with my go-to potting mix and I have also used this potting mix when it comes to propagating string of hearts and starting a new plant so that potting mix I use is a quarter regular or organic potting mix two quarters of cacti soil and then one quarter of perlite now I may adjust the ratio of the organic potting mix or the cacti soil depending on whether I'm starting a new baby string of hearts or if it was a nice mature string of hearts because again the soil is gonna help determine how often you need to water your string of hearts in addition to the size of the plant the lighting and the airflow in your environment so that is kind of my go-to potting mix when it comes to the string of hearts so now let's talk about watering my string of hearts because this is very important when it comes to caring for your string of hearts the combination of the lighting you're giving it and the watering has to kind of match in addition to the size of plant you have so what I mean by that is I have this nice long full mature string of hearts that's about three years old now and how I go about watering this is I water from the top and you guys can see it right now I use my IKEA watering can here and I use two full cans to water this guy every two weeks because of the size of my string of hearts how mature it is the amount of leaves it has the amount of vines it has the amount of thick firm plump leaves this guy has I tend to underwater this guy so I allow that soil to dry out completely before I decide to go ahead and water him because the reality is these nice and thick plump leaves will retain a bit of the moisture which is a good way to kind of determine whether you need to water your string of hearts or not without necessarily sticking your finger into the soil so whenever these uh, thick hearts or plump hearts tend to feel a little bit more softer in addition it's been about two weeks in the summer months or three weeks in the winter months that's when I'll go Go ahead and water this guy and you guys can see I go in my chair and I water it from the top up and look at how well that water drains through that obviously tells me that that potting soil is completely dried up that it is well draining and yes I do have a bowl underneath the sky to catch the water and some towels you know on the floor so that way I don't make a mess I actually used to take him over to the sink uh, last year but then whenever I would hang him back he's a tangled mess and I'd spend the next 45 minutes <laughs> untangling it so for me it was worth a bit of that mess and trying to keep him a bit more tangle free but also making sure I water him really really thoroughly so like I said I use about two full watering cans and that should last about you know the next two weeks partly because he's got a lot of vines they're really long a lot of hearts so I didn't want to just use one watering can because if I did use just one full watering can I'd probably need to water this guy the following week because like I said it's gonna dry up pretty quickly the potting medium is quite airy plus in addition I got a south facing window so all of that combined will really impact you know when you go about watering your string of hearts however when I first got this guy and he wasn't as long or as dense as it is today and his hearts weren't as thick or as plump I would actually water this guy when it's about like 90% dry partly because there was a lot more of the leaves that are a little bit more thinner and thinner leaves won't retain as much of the moisture so they will need a bit more of the moisture so I don't recommend to allow your string of hearts to dry out completely if you have more of the thinner hearts and your string of hearts are a little bit more mature I would say you know water it when it's about 90% dry again use a moisture meter stick your finger method or use a chopstick and also back then I would only use one full watering can and that was enough to last about two weeks before he needed to be watered again because like I said he didn't have as much vines or as many hearts that required and needed that much water so that is something to keep in mind is your watering will need to adjust as your string of heart changes and grows depending on the light you get the potting medium it's in and so on uh, so yeah so that is how I go about caring for my string of hearts people ask me do I fertilize it my answer is no I've never fertilized my string of hearts partly because he's healthy he's growing uh, no issues you know he's not deficient in any of the uh, nutrients that he needs so for me I've never uh, fertilized it and honestly the lighting and watering is your two ingredients to grow a nice full and luscious string of hearts I'm just kidding but now let's take a look at an example from Lauren who sent me pictures of her string of hearts and you guys can see right here it's going through a bit of issues balding at the top the leaves are dropping the growth of the leaves are a bit sparse so between where those hearts are there's a nice long big piece of vine there and she has a combination of thick leaves at the top 
and then the newer leaves are a bit more thinner and smaller in growth and her lighting that she has is in, is in an east facing window just behind this curtain that you guys see there the way she goes about watering this is she does water more on the modest side once a week now she does have it in this decorative pot that's very difficult for her to see if that water is draining through she says the potting medium it's in is in the original uh, potting medium where, when she first bought it. So let's assume it's similar to what I have. However, she does know this is a bit more compact. A few things I would suggest her to do and change right away. One is the lighting she's giving it. Although it's in an east facing window, which is, you know, pretty good. I would say move it to a location where it's not behind the curtain because that again is blocking the amount of light your string of hearts can get. The next thing I would do is to cut back her watering. And the reason for it is because a, the lighting she gets is already east facing window and on top of that it's behind a curtain so that potting medium is not drying out completely and on top of that her string of hearts isn't necessarily as full or as long or it has a lot of leaves for it to require that much water so i would definitely suggest to allow that soil to dry out a little bit more before she waters it the other thing i suggest to her is to not have it in this decorative pot with this macrame hanger Partly because a, she can't really see if that water is draining through when she is watering. And again, seeing the water drain through will tell you a lot about the current condition your soil is in. Is it dried out or is it well draining or is it possibly compact and maybe there's a lot more moisture still in there and it wasn't ready to be watered. So that is why I never recommend, you know, having your string of hearts in the decorative pot that you can't see when it's draining through. In addition, if she was to remove this string of hearts to take it over to the sink uh, in this macrame hanger, the reality is her hearts are gonna fall off because it's gonna be a struggle to take that thing out of the macrame hanger, you know, water it and then place it back. That's why I never recommend putting a string of hearts um, in that type of hanging tool. So what I use is actually the original nursery container right now and this little like plastic hanger and this clips on pretty much any plastic uh, container or nursery pot. And you guys can get this at your local garden center or nursery or, you know, you can buy one that already has it. But uh, that is probably what I would recommend if you wanted to hang your string of hearts on uh, a ceiling. So the other thing I would suggest her to do once she moves it closer to the window to get a lot more lighting, cut back her watering, remove it out of that decorative pot so that way she can see when that water is draining through is to then cut her string of hearts back so that way she can promote new growth on the current vines that's still planted in the pot and then use her cuttings to obviously propagate, let it root in water and then plant it back to the mother plant. So that way she can kind of almost start over. So now let's touch a bit on some of the common questions I was getting when it comes to the way the leaves are shaped. One is curling of the leaves. Now curling of leaves on any plant is usually a sign that it's being underwatered or that your plant is slightly dehydrated and needs a drink. With the string of hearts, that may also be true. It does depend on the current state your string of hearts is at right now. If you have a string of hearts that tends to be more on the younger juvenile side, odds are a lot of the leaves are gonna be a little bit more thinner and therefore they won't retain as much of the water and moisture and they will be slightly sensitive to being underwatered. So be mindful that you may not wanna allow your string of hearts to dry out completely if yours is slightly younger, juvenile, and has a lot more of those thinner hearts. But if yours is slightly more mature, like mine, and has a lot of these nice, thick, plump, and firm hearts, then they can tolerate being underwatered, and that is why I allow mine to dry out completely before I decide to go ahead and water it again. And usually, I'll also know when these firm hearts tend to be softer, and uh, they're not as firm or as plump because at that point it is a bit dehydrated and needs to be watered. But also keep in mind the curling of the leaves doesn't necessarily mean that you're underwatering because if your hearts are firmly attached to the vine, they're not going anywhere, they're not flimsy or they're not falling off. Uh, it could just be because they're just not as mature yet. They're just more on the thinner side, so they will tend to have a bit of curl and it doesn't necessarily mean you're, you're underwatering. So you gotta kind of pay attention to what your string of hearts is telling you right now. Now, the other question I was getting is, why are the new growth small? Um, like most plants, when a new leaf shows up, they will tend to go a bit smaller. And over time, as long as you're giving it the right lighting, the proper watering, the proper care, they will grow to be a little bit bigger. However, if your string of hearts, you're finding that every growth, you know, for a long period of time are small, 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 you may want to check to see if it needs to be repotted. But honestly, I don't necessarily think your string of hearts needs to be repotted. It could just be a lack of lighting as well, because I find that the hearts that are closer to the bottom on my string of hearts, uh, even with time, are a little bit smaller because down here doesn't necessarily get as much light as up here. So uh, they will tend to, you know, stay more in that smaller stage even after long periods of time. So what they typically will do is just cut mine back um, because I don't necessarily like to have it super long where it's, you know, near the bottom. 
but lighting is also going to be a big factor on you know how big your hearts can grow and get as big as well so keep that in mind now dropping of the leaves suddenly um it really depends on what you're noticing before they drop did they turn yellow and then drop that's usually a sign that you're overwatering. did they curl go wrinkly dry out and then fall off that's usually a sign of underwatering. so again pay attention to the way the leaves are reacting to whatever you're doing or however you're caring for it. So now let's get into how we can make our string of hearts look a little bit more full, a little bit more dense, and address a bit of the balding that's going on at the top. So first, let's take a look at the top of my string of hearts. And you guys can see here, it's not as full as what you probably expected. He is a bit bald. It doesn't have as many leaves as the rest of the vines and partly because of a couple of things. One is like most plants, as it gets older, leaves will tend to drop, especially the older leaves. So the one closest to the top will be the oldest leaf and they will just naturally kind of fall off. The other thing I would say is probably the top part of the string of hearts because it is close to my ceiling isn't necessarily getting as much light as the vines are getting. So therefore that can cause a bit of the leaves to drop because of just lack of lighting. Now, if I did say bring this down a little bit lower and then that way the top can get a bit more of the sunlight, what will eventually happen is it will start shooting out new vines or new growth, especially if you have a lot of tubers that's showing up on the soil there. Now tubers are pretty much the nose that kind of just, you know, grew into this ball and that's where the roots are growing. And you'll typically see them at the top of your potting soil or when you repot them you'll see them all in there now tubers can also grow along the vines especially if your string of hearts is mature and you guys can see right here there's a lot of tubers growing along the vines and you guys can easily take this tuber cut it and plant it back to the mother plant and that's how you can then also create more of a fuller growth at the top because eventually it's going to grow roots and then it's going to shoot out new vines uh, off this tuber so if you are experiencing a bit of the balding that is what you can do another way to also make that top look a little bit more full is maybe take a vine and bring it all the way to the top and wrap it along the top of that pot the key thing here is to make sure that those nodes are touching the potting soil so what you guys can do is kind of pin it down or what I will typically do if I do this method is just get some more potting soil and just pour it on top of that vine or that string. So you're kind of somewhat planting this entire vine into the mother plant, into the soil at the top layer. And over time with the right lighting, the proper watering, those nodes will eventually grow roots down to the soil and then they will shoot out some new vines as well. But keep in mind, it does take a bit of time with this method. Now, the other methods is obviously cut and propagate and then plant those cuttings back at the top. So there are a couple of methods I like to do when it comes to propagating my string of hearts. And I've done a lot of detailed videos on this. So definitely check it out if you guys want to see that. But the first method I would say, if you want to keep a bit of length on your string of hearts, is do the water propagation. So pretty much take a vine, cut it and make a few cuttings. I usually like to leave about two to three hearts plus a node. And to make a node, you just pretty much expose that node by clipping off the two hearts on either end of that node at the top. And you guys can see there's a node. And then putting this into some water and making sure that that node is always submerged in water. Put it in an area that gets a lot of bright light, warm temperatures. And within a few weeks, you know, you should start to see some roots grow. You can then take these cuttings and plant it back at the top. And if you guys do struggle when it comes to planting your cuttings back at the top, I did also do a video on how to go about doing that. So definitely check it out after this video. Now, the other propagation method I also like to do is the butterfly method. And what you do here is you take again a vine, you cut it and you create multiple butterflies. And what that means is you just cut on either ends where the hearts are leaving a piece of vine, maybe like half an inch on each side that you guys see here. And then creating a prop box using some sphagnum moss. So get a little container, whether you want to use some takeout containers like what I'm using right now, get some sphagnum moss that's damp, not wet and place it inside your container and then place these butterflies on top of that sphagnum moss, making sure that that node is touching the sphagnum moss, cover it up and then place it in an area that gets a lot of bright light and warm temperatures. Now, people ask me all the time when it comes to prop box, how do you avoid it from getting moldy? So there's a couple of things. One is making sure that your sphagnum moss isn't soaking wet. It's damp, it has moisture, it has a bit of the water, it retains it, but it's not soaking in water, if that makes sense. The second thing is making sure you're putting in an area that gets a lot of bright, bright light and warm temperatures because what you need to take place is condensation. Condensation pretty much is telling you that there's water action going on in your prop box. If there is no condensation and your sphagnum moss is damp or more on the wet side, that pretty much says that your cuttings are sitting in still water. It's not moving, there's nothing going on in there and that's what's creating a bit of the mold. I've had these prop box where I don't even open it for weeks, even months. 
because I know there's condensation, which tells me there's just activity going on in there. There's airflow, water is moving, water is rising, and therefore they're not sitting in still water. So keep that in mind when you're creating a prop box with Spagna Moss. So after creating your prop box using the butterfly method, you know, within a few weeks or a couple of weeks, you should start to see some roots like you guys see here on my string of spades. Nice baby roots. Some of them are attaching to the Spagna Moss already. And if you wait a little bit longer, eventually these little butterflies are going to shoot out some strings like you see here on my variegated string of hearts. And these guys are going to be ready to pretty much be planted back at the top of the mother plant if you want to or create a completely new plant with these. Now, now, when it comes to the butterfly methods, you may find that the roots aren't necessarily as long or you don't necessarily don't have as much to work with to try and you know plant that deeply back into the mother plant. So what I'll typically do when it comes to adding butterflies back to the mother plant is I usually just put it on the top layer of that pot with a bit of sphagnum moss like these guys see here. And the reason for it is because the sphagnum moss will continue to retain a bit of the moisture and therefore it will allow you to properly water your string of heart mother plant still like you normally would. But then in a couple of days, when that top layer dries out or when that sphagnum moss is a bit dry, then use a mister to kind of mist it to keep it consistently moist, which is very important because you do not want these roots to dry out completely because these cuttings will die. Eventually, these roots will continue to grow down towards the soil and be part of the mother plant. Again, water your string of hearts like you normally would water the mother plant. Just make sure that that top layer of that sphagnum moss is still going to be consistently moist by just getting a spray bottle and misting it, you know, when it starts to feel dried out. Now, some of the questions I'm gonna get is what happens when you cut your string of hearts what happens to the existing vine uh, what will typically happen is they will continue to grow like most plants some of them will actually split into two vines like you guys see here thus creating a nicer fuller look so you know you can turn that one single vine at the top and turn it into two vines sometimes it'll even split to three vines uh, another thing as well too to kind of make it look a little bit more full in terms of the hearts growing closer together and not necessarily further apart is again lighting lighting is gonna be a big factor in that if you guys look closer to the bottom here, where it doesn't necessarily get as much lighting as up here, you'll notice that the hearts are growing farther apart, in addition to them being a little bit more smaller. However, on the other side of my string of hearts here, because of my greenhouse here that has a bit of grow light, I noticed a lot of those hearts near the bottom are now growing a little bit closer together, which again does create a little bit more of that fuller and dense look. So lighting is going to be your best friend when it comes to your string of hearts. Now, if your string of hearts is blooming like you guys see here, and these are what the blooms look like, you can pinch this off, just pretty much just clip it off. And eventually that's also going to shoot out a new vine. So that's another way to also create a much more fuller look. So there you guys have it. That is pretty much everything I know when it comes to caring for the string of hearts. Again, take the information I'm giving you guys and adjust it according to your environment and what current stage your string of hearts is at. The other advice I would give you guys is try and not stress out because your string of hearts isn't perfect like mine. I'm just kidding. But the reality is mine is not perfect. It has flaws. And as long as your plant is healthy, the hearts are intact, it's growing, yours is fine, even if you have a bit of curling leaves or some of the leaves are a bit smaller. And also keep in mind that it does take time and a bit of patience when it comes to growing a string of hearts. With that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Comment below and let me know what you think. If you have any additional questions I didn't address in this video, enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you guys soon. Peace.